James Ernest of the Grueling Truth Radio Network here with author Joe Holly. Joe is the author of Hurricane Season, the unforgettable story of the 2017 Houston Astros and the resilience of a city. So tell us, what inspired the book? James, it, it was a, almost a, a too-good-to-be-true story that, uh, that Houston experienced last year. A uh, story that was, that was just too good to pass up. I mean, this city went through an incredible hurricane, but, but more, uh, more seriously, a flood. And then, of course, at the very same time, the Houston Astros were in the process of, of winning their first World Series championship in franchise history. So, so the confluence of those two experiences and, and the way the city reacted to them is what inspired the book. Is this a traditional uh, sports book, or is it more about the you know the human nature, human you know uh, condition? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I'm not. Uh, a sports writer, although I write about sports now and then. I'm uh, basically a columnist for the Houston Chronicle, and uh, the column I write is called Native Texan, and I usually end up in a lot of times in small towns around the state. And, and I'm looking for interesting people, uh, something about the history, something about the uniqueness of the place. And so that, that's what Hurricane Season is about as well. It's about this community, which happens to be a very large community, and how it responded to, to last year's incredible events. So I'm guessing you take a lot of pride in being a native Texan. <laughs> hey, the pride of Waco, Texas, James. Uh, I've been writing about Texas for years and years, and it's um, a big place, and there are a lot of interesting tales, some true, some not. Uh, in this in this state, so that's what I write about. Should we expect to see the Astros back in the World Series this year? Well, that's a good question. You know, you know, Sports Illustrated predicted that they would be in the World Series last year. Predicted like four years ago that they would be there, and and most people scoffed. I think you probably scoffed, James. <laughs> but but the, the same guy who made that prediction four years ago is predicting a repeat for this year even though they're, they're not off to, to the same blazing start that they were last year. Is it odd seeing them in the American League? To say that again? Is it odd seeing them in the American League? I mean, for the yeah, first time, bit, yeah. National League team. Of... Yeah, it's, it's a little bit odd, uh, although I guess we've gotten used to it, but you know, it, the, uh, the Astros owner, Jim Crane, had to be sort of dragged kicking and screaming into the American League when, when he bought the team in 2011. And, um, you know, Astros fans, I think, felt the same way. But uh, it's, um, it, it works out, obviously. So how dark were those, uh, those darkest days with the Astros? Oh, man, I, I went to a game, you know, uh, I guess, let's see, three, in 2013, uh, the, the Chronicle office is a few blocks away from Minute Maid Park, and I sneaked away one afternoon uh, because I like afternoon games, uh, and the Astros were playing the, the Oakland A's. And, you know, there, there were empty seats. It, it echoed inside that park. There was a bird flying around, and it was dismal. Uh, you know, and, and they had the makings of, of some of the championship team on the field that year. Uh, people like Jose Altuve. Boy, it was depressing. And it, it was, I guess you would say, it was an act of faith on the part of Crane and his general manager, Jeff Luno, the fans and the players, about whether this sort of reconstruction effort would, would result in success. How important was Crane to the, uh, his patience to the whole process? I think it, I think you 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 hit the the, the key uh, characteristic. He had to be patient, and you know, knowing him, uh, I imagine there were times when he had to ask himself, "Is this going to work?" You know, and there there were certainly no guarantees, even though they were putting together uh, the makings of a fine team. There were still no guarantees that it was going to work. So yeah, I'd say patience is, is was vital to the Astros' success. Is the approach you feel is it uh, sustainable? Uh, you know, it's it's the the ultimate analytics data approach to baseball these days, and uh, the Astros.
pitchers are on the cutting edge, but other teams certainly are, are doing the same thing. The Cardinals, the Cubs, the Dodgers, you know, the team that they played in the World Series last year. So um, everybody's pick. most teams, as best I can tell, are picking up on it. And despite the, uh, uh, the, the, the idea that, that data and analytics can control everything, there are some things you just can't control, like, like injuries or luck or, or who knows what. So it, it's hard to say, but I'm sure they will, they will maintain the same approach. So in other words, you feel that the, uh, the approach is emulatable? Where you know other teams could probably try something similar, not guaranteeing oh, have the same result. Exactly, exactly, and they are trying the same thing. You know, the, the Cubs the year before was another uh, Moneyball analytics data heavy team. You mentioned Moneyball. What's the big difference between this method and the Moneyball method? You know, it's a little bit similar. It's it's the idea that that you don't have to go out for for big name, uh, big uh, salary players that you can use, as I understand it, uh, you can use analytics and data to find the perfect fit for whatever it is that you need. And I I suppose one example from last year would be signing Justin Verlander from the Detroit Tigers uh, during the stretch run uh, of the season. I mean, the Astros needed a a pitcher like Verlander, and they got in, they, they fit him in, and, and it worked. What made uh, these players really stand out to you as you know, individuals? You know, it's, it's both the players as individuals and the players as a team. They are young, they are talented, they are loose, and they're fun to watch. And I think the whole... The whole baseball world last year began to realize that, particularly during during the championship series and and certainly in the World Series, that these guys are they seem to be enjoying themselves out there on the field, and and it's it's enjoyable to watch them. And then the other thing, James, is that that they are they're part of this community, and when a community was under stress, as it was last year. They were part of that. They, and of course, J.J. Watt of the Houston Texans, who raised millions for, for Houston. Yeah, I mean, J.J. Watt did such a phenomenal job. Could you share, Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah, could you share an example with us of uh, you know, some of the things that the Astros did to uh, help out in the community? There, there's, some, there's some great stories, uh, particularly uh, about how the Astros, when, when the flood set in, you know, were were in California, and they had family here, they, they were, were watching TV just like everybody else and were worried, and, and when they flew home, there's this poignant moment when the plane is descending over Houston, and these young men on that plane are looking out the window at their city that had become a sea, and from what I hear, it was deathly quiet on, on that plane. But once they got here, you know, they volunteered in the the uh, convention center that had been turned into a, a place of rescue for this city. They contributed money. Uh, Jim Crane sent supplies to Puerto Rico for uh, on behalf of several Puerto Rican players on the team. So, so they were an integral part of uh, the uh, recovery effort here. So uh, what is the biggest difference between... Houston and the rest of the country, because I know in part of it, you mentioned where, you know, just, it, it's a different way of life. <laughs> uh, what's interesting about Houston is, is that it's a big, sprawling city, but it's also the, the most diverse city in the country. It prides itself on a reputation for welcoming newcomers and giving everybody a chance to be what they want to be, and the Despite you know the, the its reputation for heat and humidity, it's a great place to live. How were you able to get such access to the uh, the players for this book? Well, I'm you know I'm an old reporter, and so I, I go where the players are. I I go on I think it was Thursday nights and and listen to interviews with the players at Plucker's restaurant and. Uh, you know, it's, it, it was a story worth telling, and so it, 
they they were interested in, in making sure that the story was told as well. I agree with you. Great story. Uh, looking forward to big things with this book. Uh, tell us some of the people that you would like to thank for your help with uh, with making the book. I'll tell you for sure. I mean, this had to be a quick book. We were trying to get it out on opening day, and my wife Laura, who is a, a longtime reporter. Uh, helped, and my son Pete, who's a reporter at the Washington Post, helped with ideas and, and copy editing. And uh, as my editor said, Christmas is overrated, so I sat at the computer and wrote uh, while wife Laura uh, backed me up. Excellent. And then on uh, social media, website, where can uh, fans find more out about the book and get their own copy? That's exactly right. They get, if, there's, if it's not in the bookstores, in there. Their communities, they can go to Amazon, and there it'll be. Excellent. But do you have, like, a Twitter or any of those social medias they can follow yet? Uh, it, the Twitter is called Holly News, and Holly is spelled H-O-L-L-E-Y, News. Excellent. I'd like to thank Joe Holly, uh, author of Hurricane Season, for coming on our show today. Any final thoughts from you, Joe? James, I appreciate it, and I, I hope people enjoy the book, even if they don't live in the Houston area. I, I think it's a story worth telling. Excellent. Thank you, sir.